You've been told your thyroid is normal, but you still feel exhausted, foggy, cold, or like your metabolism is stuck and you can't lose weight. Here's the truth. Most doctors will only run one to two thyroid tests and it barely scratches the surface. In this video, I'll walk you through the five powerful thyroid tests that most conventional doctors don't run, but absolutely should if you're trying to get to the root of fatigue, hormone imbalance, weight gain, or brain fog. First, let's start out with free T3, one of my favorite hormones to test. It's your active thyroid hormone. Why it matters? Well, free T3 is your active thyroid hormone, the one that is actually used to regulate energy, metabolism, mood, and temperature. If you only check your TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone, you might completely miss a T4 to T3 conversion issue, which is common with people with stress, poor gut function, inflammation, or nutrient deficiencies. Low T3 can show up even when your TSH and T4 look fine. This is why I always get frustrated because those are the two tests that are most commonly ran, but we're missing out on the other opportunities to look at the full thyroid health. Symptoms linked to low free T3 could include sluggish metabolism, hair loss, especially in your outer eyebrows, cold hands and feet, fatigue that coffee just won't fix. And then next, let's look at free T4. It's an inactive hormone, but this is the one that's most often tested, most misunderstood. Free T4 is a storage form of your thyroid hormone. Your body must convert free T4 into free T3 to feel good. If free T4 is high, but free T3 is low, you might have a conversion issue, a sign that your body's struggling with inflammation, poor liver function, or adrenal stress. That's why running T4 alone is never enough. Most doctors stop at ordering the TSH and free T4 like I mentioned, and then they'll prescribe a synthetic version of level thyroxine, which is T4. It has a lot of synthetic fillers and is inflammatory by nature and usually keeps people feeling inflamed and maybe feeling them slightly better, but not healing. Pro tip, I always pair free T4 with free T3 and reverse T3 to get the full picture. So then let's talk about reverse T3. It's the thyroid blocker. Reverse T3 is like a brake pedal for your thyroid. When your body's stressed, think inflammation, trauma, under eating or chronic illness, it may convert T4 into reverse T3, a hormone that blocks free T3 from entering your cells, using your, it for your body and energy. So when you see high reverse T3, which for me is anything over 13, even though Western medicine has normal labs, maybe sometimes is 21. What's too high, you're making thyroid hormone, but your body's blocking its use. Common causes of this can be low calorie diets, overtraining, chronic stress, a postpartum period can happen, and then chronic illness, infections, and autoimmune issues. Symptoms of high reverse T3 include fatigue, inability to lose weight, depression or brain fog, normal labs, but you still feel terrible. This one's critical for women in high stress seasons or recovering from burnout. I've seen that high in all too many women that have more of an inflammatory autoimmune picture. Thyroid antibodies. Did you know that 90% of hypothyroid cases in women are autoimmune in nature? 90%. The two antibodies you must test are TPO, thyroid peroxidase antibodies, and thyroglobulin antibodies. Elevated antibodies equal Hashimoto's. A lot of people hear that term or they've been diagnosed with thyroid issues but never actually heard the term Hashimoto's. Even if your TSH is normal, guess what? Hashimoto's can flare years before the TSH ever changes and that's why getting a TSH alone is just not enough. Critical to the thyroid antibodies for women who are struggling with fertility miscarriages, brain fog, anxiety, depression, or have a family history of thyroid or autoimmune issues. I see a lot of patients that have a history of this. Tell my patients, if we don't test antibodies, we're not addressing the real root cause. Lastly, the TSH, thyroid simulating hormone. It's still useful, but just not enough. It is the most common test, and while it can be helpful, it's just not the full story. It measures how hard your brain is yelling at your thyroid to produce a hormone. It does actually tell you how your thyroid is actually producing, how much is active 
or how it's being used. I do like to, when I have someone um, treated with a T3 or a blend, I do like testing the TSH to get it optimal, which is 0.5 to 2. It's not up to 4.5 like most Western labs say. We really do want it to be 2 or under. But I've seen too many women told that everything just looks fine when their TSH is at a 4.3 and they're clearly symptomatic. I'm not saying we have to treat people that aren't symptomatic, but when people are coming to me, they're feeling something. If you want to go deeper into all of this, add iron panels and ferritin. This is needed for T4 to T3 conversion. Vitamin D is essential for autoimmunity and hormone signaling, so I always make sure that I'm taking these together. You can look at zinc, selenium, B12 for uh, choroid factors. Cortisol testing, either doing a saliva or Dutch test if reverse T3 is high to kind of look at and see where the deficiencies could be coming from in that end because our thyroid, our sex hormones, and our cortisol and adrenal glands work together. So we want to optimize all of them. Thyroid issues just don't exist in the vacuum, right? Hormones are a network, not an island. So when one is off, I see a lot of them being off, and that's very true with most of my women. What I do with my patients when they come in telling me they're exhausted, gaining weight, or losing hair despite their normal Western medicine labs, I run these five thyroid tests to reveal some root of their symptoms. We use personalized protocols with supplement, nutrition, sometimes bioidentical thyroid support, or hormone support, or immune support. I love using LDN, low-dose naltrexone, to help rebuild from the ground up. It's a great immune modulator. It's pretty cost-effective. It's compounded medication, but it can really help people when they do have like the Hashimoto thyroiditis. This is truly integrative medicine in action, looking beyond the band-aids and digging into why our symptoms are happening, the real root healing. So if you've been told your thyroid is fine, but you don't feel fine, don't settle. Make sure you're asking for these five tests or work with a functional provider who will test them. And if you want to get a full set of labs and work with me, I offer the Women's Harmony Within and it help, have helped hundreds of women get back to feeling like themselves. You can go to selectbalance.com and type in women's lab panel and you'll see the full details of what I love running for my women. Comment below if you learned anything from this video or if you want to dive deep into how you can actually support your thyroid healing. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want a more honest, root cause health education that empowers your healing journey. Until next time, thank you.